All right. Court of Appeals Division One is now in session. Thank you, folks. Have a seat. And good morning. So we are here in uh, for oral argument in 3SL Family LLC versus State of Arizona at all. Um, it is 1CACV 220247. Uh, we, uh, so folks are aware, we are recording and broadcasting these proceedings live. So as you approach the podium, please state your name and your client's name clearly so that folks know who you're representing. We are, of course, back to arguing from the podium. You can see your clock from the podium. The clock does show your time as it's ticking down, not as it's ticking up so that you are aware of how much time that you have left. Um, we have gone through the briefs carefully. We have conferenced the case before we came out here. So we're very familiar with the issues. Um, and we'll, I suspect, have some, some questions for each of you on the issues. Uh, you do have the 20 minutes. You don't need to use the whole time. Um, but you are certainly welcome to use all of it. So, counsel, if you're ready. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Court. Um, for the video record, uh, my name is Gregory Falls. I am here today uh, with my partner, Matthew Hesketh, on the briefs. Um, we are representing the appellants and uh, cross appellees. Uh, that is the state of Arizona, the Arizona Department of Health Services, and uh, the department's interim director, uh, Jenny Kuniko. Um, because most of the actions at issue here, in fact, I think all of them were undertaken by the department, um, I will refer mostly to the department by that name, although the arguments are intended on behalf of all of my clients. Um, we said in the briefs uh, that the, the question here is, what is a school? And that that question defines this case. And uh, I believe that is still true. Um, and the reason is that according to the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act, we all know that a dispensary may not be within 500 feet of a public or private school. Um, the terms public or private school are not defined in the Medical Marijuana Act. Uh, the department uh, exercising its discretion uh, as authorized by the act and uh, in, generally uh, adopted rules. Um, and in those rules, the department defined public schools and private schools to be consistent with the way they're defined in Title 15, the Education Code, which governs both public and private schools. Excuse me, uh, counsel? Yes. Just a brief point. Uh, could we agree that the department does not have the power to adopt by regulation definitions of terms which are inconsistent with the statute? Uh, we would agree with that, yes. We Thank don't you. believe that's the case here, but, but that is correct. Um, the department's rules have the force and effect of law only if uh, they're in harmony with the legislative mandate, or, or in this case, because it was an initiative with the voters' mandate. And just a quick, I think, easy one. Can we agree, since it's presently in force, that the code, uh, it's uh, R19, uh, R9-13-10153, uh, presently preschool means the instruction preceding kindergarten provided to individuals three to five years old through a school. That accords with the department's present view of what a preschool is, right? Uh, that is correct. Um, there is one minor exception not applicable here, and that is public schools are required by statute to offer preschool uh, to children with disabilities. True. Um, that doesn't apply here. Uh, but also, public schools, if they want, uh, can offer preschools, uh, you know, just like this court could, uh, my office could, almost anyone could. Uh, and if that happens, they all need to be licensed and supervised by the Department of Health Services under Title 36, but not in, under the Medical Marijuana Act. But just to the basic point of my question, I think you said at the start, we agree that Part 53, as it's presently promulgated as a correct definition of preschool from your point of view, right? Uh, that is correct, yes. Thanks. Um, now, if 
this court agrees with the department's interpretation of uh, what is a school. Um, I think that's the end of the case. Um, the random drawing was appropriate. Uh, there were three people. Uh, one of them was selected. Um, 3SL lost fairly in a random drawing, and those are the odds. Now, I don't think that there is a... Well, why should the court agree with the department's interpretation? Let me explain. I don't think there's a dispute over the meaning of a public school. Um, we have, uh, since uh, I believe Phoenix Elementary District Number 1 was established way back in 1871, um, long before statehood, uh, but we have since that time developed a very uh, uh, robust uh, system of public schools, public education. Can I just, be, because you mentioned public schools, it's, it seems clear that no one's taking the position that any of these preschools are public schools. At best, the argument is that it is a private school. Would that be fair? I would agree with that, yes. And the reason that I'm mentioning public schools is because of the context in the statute and the long history that's there. Um, there was a change made 20 plus years ago where we added a thing called charter schools, and those are public schools also. But we have long before AMA had a system of public education in the state of Arizona. And after we adopted the Arizona Revised Statutes, we placed in them uh, the Education Code, which again is Title 15. Um, that is a very uh, robust regulation of education, among other things. Um, students between the ages of 6 and 16 must go to school. Um, uh, hopefully most of them attend until they graduate, which is probably a little older than 16. Uh, there must be a certain minimum number of days of education, and there must be education on reading, grammar, mathematics, social studies, and science. Those are in the statute. There are many other requirements, but the reason I point these out is now we get to the issue here in this case, and that is, what is a private school? Under the education code, a private school is an alternative to a public school. It's something that is available to anyone who does not want to go to public school and can afford to do so. But the department defined it as an, any private institution that imparts instruction. The, the department defined a private school as a school as defined in Title 15. And that's the definition from, uh, that is the, the exact definition. In, 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 I believe that is correct, yes. But you have to look at it in context. A private school under Title 15 is not anything anywhere that imparts instruction. Um, community colleges do, colleges do. Um, a, we've named many other alternative forms of education where instruction is imparted. No one is saying, I think, that any of those other alternatives are private schools under Title 15. And that is our argument here. You have public schools here, you have private schools here. Private schools are subject to many of the same requirements. Ages 6 to 16, a certain number of days per year, same subjects, reading, mathematics, social studies, science, grammar, all of those apply to Title 15 private schools. Not any of those apply to daycare facilities that offer instruction. What do we, because I mean, our goal here is the intent of the voters, and to do that we look at the plain language. We just do a, a straight up statutory analysis to say what is it that the voters meant based on the language we're looking at. In one place they used preschool, and it would to read it as I think the other side argues it, we'd have to say preschool, school, private school and public school, and repeat school in kind of an odd fashion. But then in the 500-foot limit, it didn't include preschool. Don't we draw something from that, from what the voters' intent was? I, I, I think we have to. Um, and the voters in AMA clearly said preschool when they wanted to include preschool, and that is you cannot possess or use marijuana. Any preschool, whether or not they offer instruction, or any of the other schools. Um, we know that they couldn't say uh, colleges and universities because there's the Supreme Court case Maestas where the, the court said, mm, sorry, the voters didn't mean that. Uh, that doesn't apply here. But what does apply here is that 
voters went to the polls and they said, okay, my kids go to school and this is something where there's not going to be a dispensary next door to where my kids go to school. Council, what, going off of what that says, though, say, would that mean that you're saying the overall intent of that structure is to make sure dispensaries are not next to places where kids go to school? I, I think you can imply from that provision being in the AMA that the intent, I mean, the AMA doesn't say any place, we're trying to keep marijuana away from any place where kids are. Uh, it does say we are keeping it away from where children are going to public schools and private schools. And we've offered many examples in the briefs where the AMA does not say we are keeping marijuana away from that shopping center down the street that has a martial arts studio or gymnastics studio or a dance studio. Well, I don't think you need to, to wander far enough away from that. I think the problem is more highlighted by a business that functionally looks like a school. So what about cram schools, places like Kaplan or Kumon or those places where instruction is provided in all of the necessary fields and grade school children go? What about that? I, I think that if it, that a it, private school? If, it is, if it is either a public school or a private school um, and there are children uh, from kindergarten through 12th grade attending, Dispensaries cannot be within 500 feet. Okay, so even if it's not even if it's not a regulated private school, so in other words, they don't hold a Title 15 uh, regulation. Department of Education does not look in on them. It's just a cram school. Yeah, it's, and, and, it's a and voluntary for-profit cram school. And and let me make it clear on my comparison of private schools to public schools. I wasn't saying that you have the same level of regulation and in the private schools and for the most part many of the private schools just like you have just defined um, operate without the Department of Education standing over their shoulder. But if anyone sends their child to a, an alternative to public school, they're required to file uh, paperwork with the state saying... But Council, I'm not talking about an alternative to... The, so this is... I'm talking about something that's supplemental. I'm saying after school, cram school. Is, it, does that count as a private school? You know, I don't know the answer to that here. I would say that if it is defined as a Title 15 public school or private school, then it then it does. If it is a, a home home study program where I just have some children come to my house and study after school, no. Uh, whether I charge them for that or not, no. Um, the the way the department interprets the AMA is that it means Title 15 schools that were in place at the time of the AMA 2010, and those are the places where we cannot have a dispensary. Well, Council, what, what do we do with your definition of school that existed until July 2, 2019, that included non-Title 15 schools, specifically preschools? And I'm referring here to uh, it's, uh, Code 913-101. 29 and 33, the predecessors to the parts I asked you about before, and four of the subparts there are Title 15. School is defined in ARS 15 accommodation school, charter school, private school, all Title 15. But the department also defines school to include preschool and kindergarten in parts B and C of 33. What are we to do with that? Well, it, it, where the department uh, refers to a preschool specifically, mm -hmm. I, we have no argument with that. Where, where the statute refers to a preschool specifically, we have no argument with that. But you define school to include preschool. That's kind of my point. Well, if for purposes of the section that you're citing to me, yes. Mm -hmm. Not for purposes of the prohibition in the Medical Marijuana Act that says a private or public school. That is defined the way we defined it in the rules, which is that it's a traditional Title 15 public or private school. There are many other areas. Uh, for example, uh, there's law that says that uh, uh, there's enhanced sentencing if there's drugs present in a, in a school zone. And that's Title 13. And the statute includes preschools, public schools, private schools, things like that. 
where the statute says that, then that is how we apply the statute. But where the statute is silent, then we look at the context and we look at the absence of preschools in the definition. We also look at what, what was, how did people interpret that in 2010 when they went to the polls and voted? And isn't that the point from JH to KL, which is there are a lot of different places where these terms are defined differently. And um, I, when I look at the definition in Title 36, for example, for vaccinations, um, the legislature defines school as meaning a, a public, private, or parochial school that offers instruction at any level or grade through 12th grade except for the daycare facilities. And isn't that part of this, the challenge is we don't always have to be 100% consistent in our definitions, and that's what JH2KL made. I think that's the right initials. I could be wrong. The, that a daycare or a school could mean one thing in one setting, for example, when we're giving out services for hearing tests um, or deciding which children need to be vaccinated versus where we're going to place a medical marijuana facility. I, I think that's correct. And we need to, we always need to go back and look at the statute itself and how did the statute define school. And that does not mean that school in various statutes cannot be defined in a different way. The one we're worried about here is the Medical Marijuana Act where it said public or private school. And this is a good example of that. Most people think of a university as a school. Uh, they, uh, I, I do, yes. And the AMA does not consider that a school. Uh, not at all, no. Um, or community I'm colleges, apparently. I'm going to interrupt for just a second, because I'm going to add 10 minutes to each side's time, so, because I think we have some more questions, and I want you folks to know that, too. So we'll stop for just a second while we add the time. I apologize for interrupting the flow, but I think it was just better to do it that way. All righty. Council? And yes, thank you. I didn't want to interrupt you, Judge Goss, but no, jumping, in, jumping in on Judge Goss's point, I mean, isn't it a coincidence, I mean, not really, that colleges aren't schools because we have two sets of enumerations of schools in the statute that we're interpreting. 2802, you've got preschool, primary school, secondary school. None of those is college. And then in 2804, we're talking about today, you have the public and the private school. So college is not included. Doesn't it make sense, instead of Title 15izing those two sets of schools, to interpret them coterminously so that the sets of schools in 2802B is the same as the sets of schools in 2804B? Isn't that the plain intention of the voters, Council? What, what I, I don't know uh, that the intention of the voters was beyond what is what the wording of the statute is and as interpreted by the Department of Health Services in, in its rulemaking. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to go back uh, and rewrite this law, uh, this court or me or the department or 3SL, we could do a far better job of making it real clear what we mean. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you know, we're stuck with what the voters said, and uh, our argument is that the voters meant um, schools are the place where you send kindergartners through uh, 12th graders, and whatever those are, those are schools. Now, I want to comment a little further on that, because the, the preschool argument throws a twist into it, and I think 3SL um, caused that twist, and, and that is their argument that, well, 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 first of all, we need to keep in mind that Title 15 schools are either regulated or, or not by the Department of Education um, under Title 15. All daycare facilities are regulated by the Department of Health Services under Title 36. Um, you must, if you have a daycare facility, even if you're a private school or a public school, if you have a daycare facility, you also need a license under Title 36. So it is a different regulatory scheme. Well, the suggestion by 3SL is that we look at that daycare facility and then we decide whether or not they offer instruction. And if they offer instruction, we're gonna call them a school. If they don't, we're gonna call them just a plain daycare facility. 
Well, imagine. Can't, 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 can't they do both, though? Can't, can't these facilities, and don't they actually have two functions? They have, they have a daycare facility and they have a preschool? Or are, they co are you saying that they are necessarily coterminous? And, no, I, th I think it is very possible for a daycare facility to do things other than having the children watch TV all day and take naps. Um, they everything from as simple as here's how you tie your shoes to let's learn how to read let's learn all of these things yes so can they do those things yes that does not make them a school under the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act and, and picture this um, there are last time uh, I think 750 applications filed for dispensaries and there were going to be 31 dispensaries awarded um, let's assume there's an address that has five licensed daycare facilities within 500 feet um, picture the department going out and what interviewing conducting what kind of due diligence uh, to investigate whether each one of those offers instruction do they offer the instruction at a level that then all of a sudden magically converts them into a school therefore application denied Counsel, but, Counselor, are you arguing that that regulatory burden should drive the interpretation of the statute uh, n uh, no not I'm not but I am arguing that the the regulatory chaos that would result from that would be that, and, and by the way, it's not the court who makes that decision, it's not the applicant, it's the Department of Health Services. So what you have now, beyond the bright line that exists today, is you would have a situation where these applicants would have no idea when they are spending thousands of dollars putting together an application for their certificate whether somebody within 500 feet is going to be determined by the department to be a school and therefore they're automatically denied. So council speaking, I really like your phrase regulatory chaos. Um, I, I think that's an important phrase. Speaking of regulatory chaos, what was it that happened where before July 2019, the department in subpart 33 included preschool in its definition of school, and then after that it didn't? What was the thing that changed where preschool fell out of the definition of school in 9-13-101? Uh, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, there was a determination made at the department level um, that in that rule, uh, preschool was no longer needed there, and so they removed it. But specifically, the cause, I don't know the cause. And it, it involved a number of definitions. They added about 30 definitions to that I, subsection. It, the, the, the difficulty with this is there have been um, recently several developments in the Medical Marijuana Act and the rules governing the act and how certificates are allocated that, uh, that, that there have been wholesale changes and but exactly I'm, what they all are I don't claim to know them but the, where the preschool fell out was a completely different section on hearing services and I, I can tell you this preschool did not fall out because of this case mm -hmm. and it did not fall out because there was a change in the interpretation of the definition of a school. Mm. Public and private schools have always meant what they mean today according to the department. And Council, I think an important point. Well, well I'm, I understand you, your, your point that, you know, the, how the consequences, the, the regulatory chaos that can ensue, um, I'm not quite sure how you expressed it, but the case law also instructs us to consider the impact of the statutory construction on the ability to perform the regulation. Well, and I'm looking at the Wilkinson case. So we are allowed to consider, is this going to make it impossible to administer the program at all? I, there's, a, there's a fine line there. And I right. agree with you that there needs to be consideration given to whether the interpretation offered by 3SL is, is doable. Um, I mean, the, the the law is pretty strict on uh, there's a 30-day time frame to review all these, approve them, deny them or not. Um, and I, so I think that the, the administrative chaos is something that is there and should be considered. 
Um, but I would say more primary of primary importance is um, was it intended uh, that we would engage in this discretionary analysis? Because council says in the briefs, um, if it's a school, you must deny the application. Well, we, we agree with that. That's what the statute says. But the question is, is it or is it not a school? And that is the discretionary act on the part of the department that is going to be the problem if we say, okay, you guys go out there now and you decide whether all these businesses are schools. So I, I understand your, your point about the administrative difficulty and I, I, I take the point of the colloquy that was just had. Um, a concern that I have is this. Um, that when I look at this statute, I see this sort of elegant design with 2802 and 2804 and how they interlace. And on one hand, as to preschools, primary and secondary schools, which I think encompasses all private and public schools, you cannot use, possess medical marijuana. So that's just a prohibition. We keep our kids away from that there. Then, in terms of where the dispensaries are, under your view of it, for the primary and secondary schools, 500 feet away, cultivating, dispensing, but under the department's view, I guess it might be easier from a regulatory standpoint to implement. You could end up with a chain link fence with kids on a swing set over here and marijuana plants up to the chain link fence. How does that effectuate the intent of the voters? Yeah, um, the, the, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I think the, the intent of the voters um, stands as I've argued already. But one of the things that we're, we're not talking about here, which is significant, is that among other things, the department will investigate uh, the security procedures, the, the, uh, how the, the dispensary administers what it does, and many things like that are within the discretion of the department. Um, I haven't seen this happen, but I think it would be a problem if a dispensary came in and said, we're going to have a chain link fence with marijuana plants growing right here uh, next door to this uh, preschool daycare facility. I think the department would say, no, uh, you cannot have the plants growing there. Now, in most of the state, it's a real reality that they grow indoors anyway, so it's, it's not going to be that much of a problem. Um, and, you know, so I don't see that happening, but I do think that where that would be cured, again, is not in the outright denial of the dispensary, but in how that dispensary is set up. So it's, 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 more difficult, it's difficult to figure out whether preschools have the character of being instructional, but it's easy to figure out whether they too brazenly display the marijuana next to the preschool. Oh, I think not just there, everywhere. Um, I mean, it's, it's incredible the, uh, the cases and the disputes over your marijuana was visible from off property, therefore you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, and, and that doesn't matter whether it was a preschool that could see it or whether it was people driving by on the highway. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I mean, that's probably beyond the context of what we're talking about here, but I think it is covered in that we need not fear that preschoolers will be exposed. So I want to tease out a very specific aspect of the language and what the AMA says. The AMA says very specifically, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of walk through it, that it can't be within 500 feet of a private or public school, right? Correct. So that's an absolute direction. There's the mandate. The second part that we're talking about is the legislature can still make it illegal and actually penalize somebody for having marijuana on a preschool or a primary or secondary school. Separate from Separate AMA, from that. they can do that, for example, under the criminal code or something so else. So yes. Yama's direction is, one, because I don't know that it's quite as eloquent and clear that these two are even tied together, because one says, under this you shall not. Under the second it says the legislature can do it if it wants to, right? We need to be careful because there is a line where the legislature steps over the voters. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying they, they said that the legislature can do it for primary, secondary, and preschool. Yes. Okay. okay so, I agree. so that's, and when they did that, the legislature didn't put it in preschools, did it? In Title 13, and maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but for the Drug Free School Act, 
School means any public or non-public kindergarten program, common, school, or high school. Correct. So even the legislature, though it had the ability to do this, and it's just the ability, it's not the voter saying you must, but you can, the legislature didn't even do it there. That is correct. They did not. Yes. And so I'm having a prob problem challenge saying it must apply to preschools when the, when the voters didn't say it had to apply to preschools, even in the part where they mentioned preschools. Do I, is that an important factor? Well, I, I think it's important to understand that the, the voters looked and, and they knew what are schools. I mean, that, that's pretty easy to figure out the way the department has defined it. Um, preschools and daycare facilities are everywhere. I mean, they, they could be the woman in the house next door to yours who takes care of four or five children during the daytime. Um, it was not as easy for anyone to look at that regulatory scheme and say, we're going to preclude these dispensaries from being within 500 feet of all this stuff. Um, it, it, they just couldn't do that. And that's why, again, straightforward, understanding the law as written in the context as it existed in 2010 when the voters approved it is consistent with how the department interprets it, not to expand it in, under the guise of protecting children. Did the department's regulations attempt, in their best way they can, to approximate the plain meaning of the voters when they do things like define school? Uh, that, is, that is always uh, the, the primary purpose in mm -hmm. adopting uh, rules. Uh, that is what the department does. Um, and in fact, the department will do its best not to contradict uh, anything in the law. And, and we don't think that the department did anything contrary to a statute in adopting these rules. But adopting rules, you, you, you might wish to approximate or embody the plain meaning of the statutory term when you enact a rule, right? Uh, uh, the plain meaning of the statutory term mm -hmm. in the context of the statute, the answer is yes. And it was a little bit ambiguous, um, just saying public or private school, and that's why the department mm -hmm. defined public or private school for us. So we'll go ahead and stop the clock, but I, I think we ate up your rebuttal, and part of it was me talking for two minutes to try and get a point across, or three minutes. I'm going to add another three minutes, so you have three minutes for rebuttal, and we'll add three minutes. And I apologize for the same thing. Nope. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> so I think, it, just in fairness, so you have a chance to offer some level of rebuttal, and we'll give counsel. You'll have 33 minutes. Huh? Thank you for the questions. We're <laughs> a little generous, but um, more so than you would normally get, but this is uh, an interesting issue. May it please the court, your honors. Jesse Callahan. Hold, hold on one second, counsel, while we get the timer sorted out. And you're clear to go. Thank you, your honors. Jesse Callahan from May Potenza, Baron and Gillespie, on behalf of Appelli, Cross Appellant 3SL Family LLC. Also present today is my associate, Arania Fimbres Ruiz uh, from May Potenza as well. Uh, this is an interesting case. I've argued before the Court of Appeals quite a few times. It's the first time I've ever gotten extra time. So now I feel like I brought something that definitely piques all attorneys' curiosity here. It's statutory interpretation. What did the voters mean? That's what we're talking about here. And this case presents two issues for the court to decide. The first issue, our position, 3SL's position, is that the trial court correctly found that the department did not follow Arizona law when it accepted and processed an application for a dispensary directly next door to preschool. The department's position that a Schedule I controlled substance, an illicit drug, can be manufactured, bought, and sold directly next door to a preschool. Counsel, isn't it true that daycare is nowhere inside this conversation? Is that correct? Daycare is not. Okay, so, and we were talking earlier, I had mentioned questions about a cram school. Those, those are not part of this conversation either, correct? It, if there is instruction being imparted lower than, than college level, uh, I, I, it's not part of this conversation, but I think the department indicated maybe that is a school. They would have to know the more, more specifics about how would it. We look, how would that line ever get drawn? Because your standard is instruction is being imparted. The, the, the line is drawn based upon the student's 
and the families and the citizens of our community and how they look at it, is this a private school? Because again, it, if, it's a, if it's a private, say, religious school, a private religious school that is not regulated by the Department of Education, and it has five-year-old children there, and they're teaching them, and those children are learning, that is a school. And it is incumbent upon not just the department, but the people who participate in this process to make sure that they are complying with that law, which is not putting a drug business next door to children learning. And that's where you draw the line. You're so the, the family that does homeschooling and has seven kids, maybe even just one child, and is imparting instruction, then, then a dispensary cannot go next door to that person homeschooling that one child. A dispensary is not allowed next door to residential property. There's, there's setback requirements for that as well. But 500 but feet? It's two, it was 500, it's now 250 feet. Okay. They, My they point is it. it's not the same restriction. The question is, does the 500 foot restriction apply to that, that home? To, to a residential home that is not holding itself out as a school, but the children happen to be doing homework there or learning from the parents? Absolutely not. How, so what is, how do, where in the statute do I find hold yourself out as a school? It, it's, it, because the statute actually says public or private school. And so you have to say, we're not talking about somebody's home. We're talking about an actual school. If I'm educating my seven kids, that's a private school. That's, I'm private and I'm doing the education. It, if, if that is true, it, if there's a, a person who is educating seven children and they refer to it as a school and, this, and they hold itself out as a school, and, you, and in this instance, these are preschools. The people so the who- MCA teaches swim classes. That's a school for kids. The, the, the YMCA does not hold itself out as a school. The YMCA does not say, this is a school, right? The YMCA- So all I have to do is put the word school on the front of my home, and I can make sure that I get the 500 foot barrier, because that's, that's the problem I'm having. It doesn't seem to have any ability to define what we're talking about if we go with the interpretation you're, you're advocating. Well, I, as long as it's true, Your Honors, I mean, somebody could put the word school on a Circle K, and it doesn't make it a school, right? The, the point of the matter is, there are parents- So what is a school? What is a school under your definition? The common sense, ordinary definition that every voter who walked into the ballots that day and cast their vote would say, that's a school. So how is it that it doesn't include a university? We've already decided it doesn't, but most people think of a university as a school. Well, most people refer to it as a university. They refer to it no, as a college. a lot of people say they're going to school. I, when I went to college, I don't remember everybody saying we're going to school today. I, we, we go to college. We go to the University of Arizona. Or we go to the Arizona State University. We go to a university. I'm we sorry. Go to, most of the parents I know say my kids are still in school. We, if we go and we look at the campus at the Arizona State University, it says Arizona State University. It's a university. It's right. not a school. But it right? also says Sandra Day O'Connor Law School. It does it? say law school. So it, I go to law school. It, and, and it is not a school because the voters were intending, and this goes back to the multiple references to school, public school, private school, preschool specifically, that's in the AMA, which specifically goes to protecting young children, not protecting adults. Adults need not have the protections that the voters intended to provide to kindergartners, yeah. high schoolers, and preschoolers alike. You, you say that. But I, in, in terms of the voter materials, it didn't talk about young children. And the specific provision we're talking about here is public or private school. Your reference to, primary, to, to preschool has to do with something they authorized the legislature to do. Didn't mandate, but authorized. So when I read just the language at issue here, private or public school, I don't see the limitation that you're trying to argue. Well, what, what that additional language actually shows is that the voters did intend to protect preschoolers just as much as kindergartners and just the language that authorizes the legislature. Isn't it also equally valid to say that if that's what they meant, they should have included it? That's one of our rules of statutory construction. It, I, I disagree with, with that analysis. And the reason I disagree with it is because we have public or private school without saying through university, without saying excluding preschools. We have another reference as to what do we want to authorize the legislature to protect here? We want the legislature to be able to protect preschoolers, kindergartners, first graders, all the way up through senior and high school, right? That's what the voters intended to protect. So to say that the voters intended to protect the five-year-old kindergartner who's at school learning his ABCs, but not 
the five-year-old preschooler who's getting dropped off at school. Mom, you're going to school today? Yep, I'm dropping you off at your school. Learning her ABCs but that, makes no sense at all. That, that, I'm sorry. No, but I just, mm -hmm. it's interesting, and I want you to tell me why preschool, my kids go to preschool, and you you tried to say, oh, I go to university, I go to college. You, you're trying to draw that distinction, but I think if they're dropping them off at preschool, they'd say the same thing If you, in using your argument. How do you tell me that preschool is somehow different than university under that it's analysis? Different. Yes, Your Honor. It is different because it's children. It's not adults. A university is full of adults. No, it's not. I, I would venture to say, and I can, can say, that there are minors who are attending law school at the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law. So tell me. Under those circumstances, we have many young, brilliant students attending university, and that is school, and they are not entitled to that protection? Uh, under, under the current case law, they're not entitled to that protection. Right. That, that's correct, Your Honor, but that applies. But, but that so the age has... distinction that you're arguing, though, I, I'm struggling with why, why we wouldn't look at it that way. I, and I, I'm submitting to Your Honors that the department's interpretation that the voters only wanted to protect certain five-year-olds who are learning, but not other five-year-olds who are learning, at a place where the parents and the testimony in this record from the, the directors of these preschools are, we hold ourselves out as a school, we consider ourselves a school, the parents who drop them off in their mind, it's a school. Everybody who brings children there the, expects to have the same protections under Arizona law. So why did the voters say in one is absolute and the other it's up to the legislature to decide and in this case the legislature has yet to decide to protect those preschools I, I'm struggling with that as well in your argument I, I my thought process on that is this setting forth the criminal code and the consequences for violating those those specific crimes that the legislature were enacted far beyond the scope of an initiative far beyond the scope of what a voter would even consider what's the sentence what's the penalty what's the fine all of that is reserved for the legislature but very broadly i would submit to this court that the reference to just public or private school period so the voters were okay i just want your your position is the voters were okay with saying can't grow it within 500 feet but it's up to the legislature. Maybe you can smoke it in the room or not, because that's what you're saying, because that's where we're at. I, I absolutely do not think that that's what the voters intended, that it's okay to smoke marijuana in preschool if the legislature says it's okay, and, but it's, it's not okay to have a marijuana business next door to it. Same concept would apply to middle school. The same concept would apply to a high school, yet those setback requirements are being enforced by the department. The department has decided yeah. that when it comes to our youngest children who are learning, who believe they're going to school, who's in this record, parents believe they were going to school and provides curriculum, those are the ones who get no protection under the very broad public or private school prohibition in the honor. Hey, Council, you, you've talked a lot about the common sense and what regular people think, but just to, to make it a little more concrete, um, could you address a point that I raised with your opposing counsel, which is the relationship and the differences, if any, between the sets of schools set out in 2802B and 2804B? Are they the same sets of schools? Are they different sets of schools? Why? The, so the, the schools set out in, uh, it, let me... 362802, Your Honor? 2802B is preschools, primary and secondary. 2804B is public and private schools. Do those describe different sets of schools, or are they, as I suggested in my question to your opposing counsel, coterminous sets of schools? Those are the same sets of schools. Your okay. Yeah. Well, what, what principles of interpretation or construction might lead you to that conclusion? When you, when you have to read them both in harmony. And what the department's position is, read them in disharmony. Read, them, read these statutes to, to mean that the voters intended only to prohibit, potentially, the smoking of marijuana on the property for a preschool, but not the growing and the cultivating and the selling and the dispensing and the cash and everything else that goes along with having a marijuana dispensary right next door to a preschool. The, the, the only way to interpret it that makes any sense is that the people intended to protect five-year-olds learning, whether it's a public or private school, whether it's a religious school or a government school, and, and the notion that one can say that 362802 reference means that the subsequent reference in 2804 excludes preschools. Absolutely not. They knew how to exclude preschools. They knew how to mention it. They didn't. 
They said public or private school, and they didn't put a limitation on it. There was no limitation on how are we, which schools are we going to protect, and so which schools are we no not. there is no limitation, so anything that calls itself a school gets the 500-foot barrier. That's my challenge here, because that seems to be your argument. That's not what the voters intended. The how voters never would have intended that anybody who just says, I'm a school, would obtain the protections under the AMA. They would have to actually be a school. So I mean, a fucking school is a school. A karate school is a school. A yoga school is a school. Absolutely not, Your Honors. That would not have been the intention of the voters. The voters wouldn't have intended to protect yogis or, or karate uh, fighters. That wasn't it. Even I, if they're teaching five-year-olds. I want to stop. We're not protecting mm -hmm. the yogis. We're protecting, your, you're saying, the students. If we go back and we look at 2802, we have some insight into what these people intended to protect, which includes preschools. They wanted to give the legislature the ability to protect preschools just as much as any other school. And that's exactly what's happening in 36204, but they public wanted or to, they wanted, they, They're not protecting the schools, is, is under your argument, as I understand it. They're protecting the young people. Mm -hmm. So if any of these schools have young people, your argument logically says we have to protect any of the students at any school public or private, as long as they fall at least within this age range now that you've identified. Your, your, your Honor, the, the, that, is, that is not the argument that I'm making uh, as it was summarized back to me. The argument that I am making is that the people, when they voted, intended to protect public or private schools and didn't put a limiting factor in it. There are subsequently Under been case law. Uh -huh. Under Title 15, there's actually a... a I, mean, I, I want to understand. You say public or private schools. I don't see how you're defining that because public or private uh -huh. schools under Title 15 or you say public private schools in the mind of some voter. In the voters. In the voters' mind. Uh -huh. in, the, in the minds of all the voters. You, you go back and you, that's what we're to divine here. We're not to divine the legislature's intent or if and lawyers... Use maybe, the plain words of the statute and other th rules of statutory construction to do that. Uh -huh. Yes, Your Honor. The, and the plain meaning is, is where I go to the most. And that's where I think that that, that issue should be resolved in favor of protecting preschools just as much as a kindergarten. And counsel, I, I, counsel yes, let, me, let me suggest whether this works for you definitionally or whether it does not. Your opposing counsel, I thought, very helpfully agreed that preschool, because this is their current reg, not surprising you would agree, I agree, preschool means the instruction preceding kindergarten provided to individuals three to five years old through a school. Do you agree with that so far? That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. And until July 2019, the department defined a school in a subpart of its regulations, uh, 913.101, um, defined school to include school as defined in Title 15, preschool, kindergarten, accommodation school, charter school, private school. Does that accord with the plain meaning in the statute or not from your point of view? It absolutely does. Okay. That, that is, the, and we cited that in our briefs, and that mm -hmm. is, our, our position is first plain meaning, easy to see. Of course, voters would have wanted to protect preschool-age children going to learn, just as much as a kindergartner, because they're the same age. Can, you can be in kindergarten or preschool, and it's, you're the same child, you're entitled to the same protection. So, counsel, when the legislature defines school to mean a public, private, or parochial school that offers instruction of any level of grade through 12th grade, except for care facilities regulated pursuant to Chapter 7.1 of this title, is that also not a plain meaning? What we have to do is look at the plain meaning in the statutes and the definitions in place at the time the AMA was passed. This and was in place at the time of the AMA, and enacted by the legislature, and is controlling statute as opposed to a regulation that's been repealed. Tell me how I ignore that over a regulation that's been repealed. That statute does not exclude preschools or preschool age children from protections under the AMA. It doesn't have that an That statute on. doesn't include them either. That talks about getting hearing testing services. What, what we're getting into is this thought process that the general population, the people who cast these votes, have the same sophistication that attorneys and the Department of Health Services and judges do. They don't. They go to the plain meeting. They go to what they think, public or private school. Imagine yourself being a voter. You just dropped off your child at preschool. You're going to cast your ballot. Do you consider that preschool entitled to the same protections as the high school next door or as, as the, the middle school down the road? And as a parent, as a voter, you absolutely would. And I believe, based upon that common sense approach, 3SL's position on this analysis, this interpretation, 
is the right one. It's the right thing to do. It's the right result, and it makes the most sense. Counselor, I, I come back to, to my line of questioning about daycares. Wait, what you're saying here is that the, the standard voter who goes in and, and thinks, okay, well, I'm going to understand this particular provision to be inclusive of preschools because I look at high schools and I look at preschools, and, and I obviously want my children protected. But, but daycares have children of all those ranges, not just three to five. They have younger, you know, they have toddlers all the way up. And yet what I'm hearing you say, and I think that you conceded, is that a dispensary can go right next to a daycare and can put, you know, without the department's interference, can, can put plants right next to the chain link fence, next to the daycare, and that is not illegal. I, that, that seems to be inconsistent with what you're saying, is that the voter's intent is to protect children, and that means that I will include preschools, but I will exclude daycares. So do we include daycares? That question hasn't been presented to the court yet. Those facts don't And yet I'm asking it. So. Yes, I, under, under that hypothetical, I, I think that no voter would have intended a dispensary to go right next door to a daycare. Problematically, the language in the statute doesn't refer to daycares. It refers to schools. And problematically, and, preschool is not included in, in, in O2, is it? Preschool, preschool is included mm -hmm. in the AMA, uh, no, unlike okay, daycare. 04, right. Right. Sorry, right. I, I misquoted. Uh, and on 2804, it's not included, but nor is it excluded. That's that's pretty problematic, isn't it, though? I mean, it's because neither of them include daycare. Correct, Your Honor. And, and if I'm following your logic, that the average voter goes into this voting booth looking to protect children and thinks preschool, you know, school, secondary school, high school, uh, in one context, but then does not think of daycare? And, and what you're saying is, no, 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 no. It, it, they weren't thinking about daycare, and it's problematic. The statute doesn't have it there. Well, but then in 04, it doesn't have preschool. What am I to do with that? Mm. When it comes to the drafting of the statute, unfortunately, the voters, they, they weren't able to draft it. They either say yay or they say nay. But when they go in and they look at that statute, and it allows for the legislature to protect all schools, preschools all the way up, and it also provides a prohibition without specifying any limitation, public or private schools, we don't want them within 500 feet. That's what the voters would have looked at. That's what the voters would have intended, a broad definition of school, not, not something where the department's going to come in later on and say, well, for these five-year-old children learning and they call it a school, we're going to say that's not a school because that might be too difficult for the department to enforce the AMA. That's not what the voters well, ever could have intended. Well, Counselor, I'd like to jump in because I think you, you bit off more than you could chew respectfully with this child concept. I mean, the statute doesn't talk about children. It talks about school, right? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. And the unifying thread between 2802 and 4, and there are all sorts of different interpretive ideas our questions suggest and different counsel are raising, and it's an interesting question about which people can reasonably differ. We're talking about the meaning of schools within 2802B and 2804B. Um, does anything in 2804B include or exclude any of preschools, primary schools, or secondary schools expressly? 28 of those specific subdivisions of schools, no. But the reference to school in general would include all of the schools, whether it's a preschool, whether it's a kindergarten, all the way up through a senior in high school. That, that's what an ordinary person understands school to mean when you're taking your children to school. And these are the people who are voting on the initiative. And we know, I, and we know college is excluded because of Mestis, right? That's correct. College is excluded. And we know 2802B doesn't include college because college isn't the primary, secondary, or preschool, right? That's correct. Okay. For, for reading those statutes in harmony, it only makes sense to say a preschool is protected just as much as a kindergarten. The department's position otherwise not only is inconsistent with the plain language or inconsistent with some of the other statutes that we've looked at, but it also defies logic. It just makes no sense. Why would the voters have wanted a preschool to have a dispensary next to it with five-year-old children learning in it, but not a kindergarten? But that distinction has no difference. But you're asking us to read the statute to say that. I get it. I think if you had drafted it, if any of us had drafted it, we, again, could have been much clearer. But we have to go with the words that they drafted. 
My challenge, because you're, you keep saying common sense, understanding of school, but I'm, and I'm looking at a statute that says a bona fide private school whose primary purpose is the instruction of karate. That's in statute. So tell me how a private school doesn't include a karate school when our own statutes say it. Your definition says everything that says it's a school, as long as it can, can throw that name on there. And a cooking school would fall within that. Why that's not also part of that common sense if we go as far as you want to go? Because we look at 2802, and that provides the guidance for what the voters were looking at when they were thinking about what does school mean. They were talking about preschool all the way up to senior. When we have references to school, we know. But, but if my point is there are, there are the classes that Judge Faruya mentioned that are for students who are in elementary school to catch up or to do better, for high school to do better. There are LSAT programs, the Kaplan programs, to, or the LSAT, the SAT. Those are all designed for the same school. It's, you know, to teach the same kind of things, and they are private schools, and from what I gather under your definition. And the department would be charged with going out and ferreting all of those out. I actually disagree with that final point that the department is charged with that. What actually happens is the applicant has a burden on itself to submit a complete lawful application that attests under a sworn statement that it is set back at least 500 feet from a school. And if that applicant sees a preschool next door and says, oh, that doesn't count because it's a preschool, and it goes in and it submits it to the department, and ultimately that person receives the license and we find out after the fact and we challenge that conduct and say that wasn't right, the department has every ability to say... So you're saying the department doesn't have to check these? I just want to... Yeah, yeah, okay. okay, so then back up because that isn't what you just said. The department has an obligation. Yes, they have to verify it. But the department can't just say, oh, they verified, we're done. The department has to go out and see if it's true. And, and, and let's say somebody provided information to the department that was inaccurate and said, hey, this isn't next to a school, and it was. Every regulation the department has gives it the ability to go back to that person who made that misrepresentation. The but department they have has to figure out it was a misrepresentation. The department has a duty to go out. I appear, apparently and, and hire a lot of investigators now to drive street by street to look for whatever may be a school. No, Your Honor. What the department has an obligation to do is follow the intent of the voters in Arizona law which is not allow a dispensary to open up next door to a school. And, and I'm actually... Do, how do they do that? If it's not driving around looking for the schools that may fall within 100... So the, the first step is the applicant is to pick the location. The department doesn't pick these locations for these I'm not dispensaries. A, I want you to answer my question. The applicant picked its location. Don't try and... and now you've got the applicant's application and the department has to review it. How does the department review it if it's not looking for 500 feet around and checking under your broad definition of a school for every school that may fall within it? That's the department's job at that point, right? The, the department is supposed to perform that function. Thank you. So the department has to do that, and it has to do it for all 2,700 applications now within 30 days. So the department is going to become one of the largest employers in the state, apparently, for that 30-day period to try and do this process that you're calling for. Well, for, again, first they rely on the representation, then they go out and look. And if they see a preschool, if they see a, a, a building next door that says preschool on it, and they see school-age children going in and out of it, the department should say, this violates the setback requirement. Your application is not complete. They issue a notice of deficiency, and then the applicant can come back and say, well, actually, it's not really a school, and here's why. And for instance, if it's a scuba diving instruction, the department, in that, and it's for you know, pe people who aren't learning, and it's 38-year-olds you know, going and getting scuba tanks, of course, that's not a school. But consistent... I, 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 your, of course, is, to me, Conroy's contrary to your argument of common sense. The, of course, that's not a school. They're called scuba diving schools. People call that, I'm going to school for scuba diving. So every time you do that, I, 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 I hit a ball because you, you dismiss something that common sense calls a school. Well, we have, to, we have to then tie it back to 2802, 
which refers to the types of schools that the voters were trying to protect. Two statutes just before 2804, they talked about who they were trying to protect. Two statutes later, broadly public or private school. The more they list, the more that then gets excluded. That's what we have to look at in the statutory interpretation. If they said these four, these four types of schools, there could very well be more that the voters intended. So rather than limiting it, they made it as broad as it could be, public or private school. And, and the, the caveat there is, it starts with preschool and it ends with high so school. So does it include every school as long as it's not adult learning? Because that's, you know, that high school range, that is set private, secondary, preschool, does it include everything that falls within that non-adult learning range? From my perspective, that's consistent with the Supreme Court case, the Mestas case, that, that addresses the issue that specifically says that universities aren't included, right? And so it is consistent with it's preschool to 12th grade. That's, that's what AMA refers to. And at no point in time did the voters ever say excluding daycare or excluding preschool or excluding anything else because they didn't want it to be interpreted narrowly. It's written broadly to be interpreted broadly, and of course they there did, are limits. They did exclude it because they didn't mention it in the one statute. So we can't ignore the fact that they didn't mention but it. But they also didn't mention high schools in 2804 either. So you can't say that, your honors can't say, that the voters intended to exclude high schools. Sure can, because it says public school. A, 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 a pub, a, could be a private school, private high school. It also says private school. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and so Not of course, preschool. It's, well, it, but it doesn't say high school either. It says public or private school. So it never references high school. Before it says preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school. Then it says public or private school. But the, the concept that, that by that statement they are now excluding preschools, well, why wouldn't they so, be excluding preschools? So is preschool? your argument that we do have to circle back to Title 15? That we have to go there because you're saying private, secondary, or pri secondary and primary? Where, do, where are you getting that from if you're not going to? We um, look no farther than 26, uh, 362802 and 362804. Those answer the question. But if we did look outside of it, we would find a definition of school that was available to the electorate that was a regulation of our land that defines school to include preschool as well. And council I did not to. Sorry. Inconsistently. Yep. Sorry, council, so the. AMA cross-references the definition of a physician, doesn't it? It does. Cross-references eight or nine other titles, doesn't it? It does. Did the voters pass a law that cross-referenced Title 15? Did not. Okay. Your Honors, I, I do want to speak uh, briefly about the second issue, which is, assuming that a preschool is a school, and I would submit to Your Honors it is, what's the remedy here? Because where, where there is a wrong, there is a right. The department's position is that if this court agrees with the trial court that a preschool is entitled to the protections of a school under the AMA, then what happens? Now, the trial court grants summary judgment and said, the department should not process that application. It was too close to a school, preschool's a school. Took all the evidence, undisputed evidence, and considered it. The department's defense, assuming that this court would affirm the trial court on the first issue, seems to be because we violated the law in the first instance and processed the application, and now that person has the license, it immediately became moot. Did, at, did at 3SL point. ask for that license to be revoked? From 3SL, Your Honors, 3SL doesn't have the ability to revoke a license. The Department of Health Services has the opportunity to revoke a license. It, it institutes an administrative proceeding called a notice of intent to revoke. That's what the department would do. 3SL. No, is, no, I, I asked if, you, if your challenge, is, is that the remedy to, to revoke their license? But uh, if that's what the department chose to do, that could be a remedy. Our position is whether that happens or not is entirely between the department and the unlawful applicant because look at it this way. 3SL Family LLC did everything right. It checked all the boxes. It followed all the laws. It submitted the applications. It didn't pick a location next door to a preschool. It followed the law. The unlawful applicant who wanted to put a dispensary next door to preschool age children got a license. The department didn't follow the law and said, go ahead and keep it. And yet 3SL, the innocent actor, the one who followed Arizona law, it's the one who's left out in the cold with no remedy, while the department who violated the law and the applicant who violated the law get away scot-free. That's not checks and balances. This court has the power to vacate that ruling 
by the trial court that entered summary judgment on all remaining claims and all remedies and allow that factual record to be developed because, Your Honors, there were 30 lawful certificates issued, not 31. The 31st was an unlawfully issued certificate. There is not a limitation. But then in that case, I mean, what your client is asking for is that they be issued the certificate, correct? A certificate. It need not be the certificate. Okay. What these are are pieces of paper with a number on them. It would be a different one. A certificate, and yet that is a discretionary act by the department about whether or not 3SL should get that certificate. They already approved 3SL's application. 3SL was 100% approved. And it lost a lottery to which there was another party. To which there was another party. To which there were two other parties. There's the party who was not supposed to be in the lottery. Well, we're talking about the context of your argument here. Okay, so the party who's not supposed to be a party. You take that party out, and there's still two parties. That means that your client had at most a 50-50 chance in a lottery. Is that correct? At that time, that's what would have happened. It would have been a 50-50 chance in a lottery. 3SL learned what happened. And this has been a long road, Your Honors. It's taken seven years to get here. This all happened in 2016. But in other words, that means that it wasn't certain, it was not a certainty that your client would have gotten that certificate. It was a 50% coin flip is what it should have been. I take that as a yes. Yes, Your Honor. No, absolutely. It was not a certainty. And I just have to, do we know that your client's application would be truly compliant under this broad standard that you are identifying of what is a school? Absolutely, Your Honor. It was not within 500 feet of a school. The department confirmed it, and there has been no mention. Well, the school is the department defined it, but we're now talking a school as you've defined it. So, and a very broad definition. So I don't know that we can sit here and say any of these applications would comply with what you're asking us to articulate. The department would have to go back and reassess that, would it not? Your Honor, there's nothing in the record as to that point of potentially. My point is I can't say that yours or the third one were compliant. If you tell us that we need to have the department reassess what it means. We don't know who was compliant at that point. Your Honor, given the procedurally irregular way in which summary judgment was granted essentially in favor of the department against my client on the claims, it was our motion that was pending. We need that factual record developed below so that this court has the benefit of that factual record. That's my point. You said that your client was compliant, and my point is I don't think anyone can say that. At this point, we don't know whether your clients or the other one were even compliant. Under your new definition. Your Honor, I believe it was. I think it was. And there's no argument made below, and there's no reference below to any evidence that would suggest that we were within 500 feet of the school as defined under 3SL's interpretation of the AMA. Okay. It's not been found either way is my point. Correct, Your Honor. We need that factual record to be developed. Thank you. Counsel? Thank you. Their fundamental problem is that we don't know under their argument what is a school and what is not a school. How do we define instruction, and what is enough instruction to make a school a school? I heard the discussion about karate schools, scuba schools, and all that. And they flip to the argument that adults go there. I think scuba and karate are both undertaken by both adults and people under the age of 18. So you also think karate schools, scuba schools, and Kumon are all in 2804 to the point of my brother's question? If you accept their argument that it's a place where instruction is provided. I don't mean if you accept their argument. I mean do you think that's true? No, I do not. Okay, thank you. And by the way. Let me ask you, though, but if we accept their definition, how do you exclude it? I don't know how you exclude any place where instruction is imparted. And isn't that the challenge with that definition? I think it is because we don't know what that instruction is. Again, is it as simple as teaching you how to tie your shoes, or is it a place where high school students go to learn trades, welding, who knows what it may be. I mean there are many things that are done out there in the world that happen at places other than schools the way we define them. And if you're going to define them the way 3SL does, 
as you, as you mentioned, we didn't look at any of that, we being the department, for this allocation. That's something that would need to happen all over again, because so, who knows who's next door to them. So basically, the concept of preschool in 2802 just can't be in 2804 because it's just in inadministrable. It can't be administered because we can't know what's instructional, even well, though the department has a regulation that talks about the instructional character of preschools? Well, well I, th I think it... it could be there if it was placed there, and that was the intent of the voters. Uh, but it's not. And I, but how, but how, if, how is it not there? How are high schools and secondary and primary schools there if preschools aren't there? Explain that to me, please. Yeah, well, and, and I think that gets into a, maybe a little bit of semantics, and there was mm -hmm. some questioning uh, regarding universities and colleges, and aren't they schools? I think they are, but they, I think council said they come after school. Um, where do preschools come? Preschools come before school. The average voter is going to say, I'm dropping my kid off at school if they're dropping them off at school. They're not going to say that if they're dropping them off at preschool. Um, and you're, they, they may say that for college or university. I don't know. Um, the one final thing, and I'll, I'll make this quickly since I'm almost out of time. If we, we have a little bit of extra time because we let him go. We'll just... Okay, if we compare the definition of public school under Title 15 with private school under Title 15 and we look at the judge's decision below, that decision said that these are private schools because instruction is imparted there. Public school does not have that where instruction is imparted language in its definition, which would mean if we accept the court's ruling and we accept their definition, public preschools of any kind would not be included as, as a place on, in the 500-foot lim limitation, but private preschools would be. And there's no indication that that was intended under the law. And in fact, that's very clear because the only preschools that are included in the definition of private public school are ones that are provided under the ADA for children with disabilities. That is correct. Yes. So we would exclude all, we would, no matter, about uh, following that, adopt a, a policy of public preschools are not covered. That is correct. Yes. So my overarching question and concern with this is if we don't accept the department's Title 15 izing of 2802 and 2804, do you still win? If we don't get into the weeds of the definitions of schools and types of schools and cross apply 1501 into 2802 and 4, do you still win? And if so, why? Yes. Um, the There were two claims. They abandoned all other claims. Uh, the two claims were the mandamus claim and the declaratory judgment claim. Um, if if we lose on our appeal of the de declaratory judgment claim and you adopt what the court said as the decision, all we have left is mandamus. Uh, mandamus works only if the, you're ordering the department to do its job. The department did its job, so there is no mandamus claim for that. Uh, there is uh, a possibility of mandamus if the uh, action was arbitrary and capricious, um, uh, but the finding and the evidence necessary to, to support a mandamus claim under those facts would be that the department's position was untenable. Not that it was a mistake of law or interpretation of the law, but more more like it was intentional misconduct. And there are no allegations, no facts of any kind in this case to even go any further on that. So even if you accept their definition, um, the case is over and there's nothing further to happen. All right. Thank well, you for your time. Thank you folks for what I thoroughly enjoyed is the argument. I hope that you folks did as well. Um, it's been engaging and, and we do appreciate that everybody was very well prepared for this. Um, we tried to be as well prepared as well. So thank you. We will take the matter under advisement and issue our decision in due course. We are adjourned. <laughs>